A Hopeless Case? 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 14. I have sworn to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be atoned for by sacrifice or offering forever. Can a person become so troublesome that God will prevent him or her from coming to faith? Though we may find the answer to this question disconcerting, we must deal with the truth if we are to understand fallen humanity's relationship with God correctly. Yes, God can harden the hearts of the rebellious to such an extent that repentance is not possible. God decides to whom he will and will not show mercy. Exodus 33.19, Joshua 11.20, Romans 9.15, and Romans 11.25. Eli's son, Hophni, and Phinehas were priests who never understood the role they were to play among the people of Israel. Though priests of the Lord Jehovah, they did not personally acknowledge his authority. 1 Samuel 2.12 Rather than handling the people's sacrifices appropriately, they would take by force portions that belonged to the Lord. 1 Samuel 2 verses 15 and 16 Thereby mocking the offerings to God. 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 17 they also practiced ritual prostitution in the manner of their Canaanite neighbors and the environs of the tabernacle at Shiloh, a direct offense to God. 1 Samuel 2, verses 22 and 23 and 24. See also Deuteronomy 23, 17. When their father heard of these violations, his passive inquiry and concern fell on deaf ears. This mockery of God's righteousness resulted in the divine hardening of Hophni's and Phinehas's hearts. 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 14. Their deaths, 1 Samuel 2, 34, 1 Samuel 4, 11. Eli's death, 1 Samuel 4, 18. The death of Eli's daughter-in-law during childbirth, 1 Samuel 4, verses 19 and 20, the birth of a grandson whose name, Ichabod, appropriately marked the departing of God's glory from sinful Israel. 1 Samuel 4, verses 20 to 22, and the eventual removal of Eli's house from the priesthood. 1 Samuel 2, verses 27 to 30, and 1 Kings 2, verses 27 and 35. Having mocked the sacrifice, Eli's sons removed themselves from its efficacy. God honored their choice of self-elimination by hardening their hearts to the grace of God, essentially leaving them in a state of condemnation. At a point known only to God, he decides to deny further opportunity for repentance. They had every opportunity to trust the revelation they had received and to honor God with faithfulness, but they chose their own path which took them to their appointed end. Read Proverbs twelve fifteen and 26. Proverbs thirteen fifteen and Proverbs fourteen twelve. See also God's dealings with Pharaoh in Exodus 3, 19, and Exodus 4, 21. Like Hophni and Phinehas, many people today profess to be believers, but for selfish reasons. They embrace it socially for acceptance or control, and partially in those areas with which they are comfortable or have agreement. Some are infatuated with the idea that faith is personal. They profess a my God theology, one that conforms God to their human desire. One way in which this theology is manifested is in the belief that sincerity of faith is honored by God, even when that sincerity does not include direct faith in Jesus Christ. 
This belief undermines the sacrificial nature of Christ's death. It taints the message of the gospel and, therefore, has the potential of leaving its proponents, as well as others, without the hope of salvation, as did Hophni and Phinehas's so-called sincere inculcation of Canaanite rituals into the Israelite system of worship. These folks know the truth of the gospel, but for social acceptance and due to a false sense of compassion, they deny it. If we go on sinning willfully after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a certain terrifying expectation of judgment. Hebrews 10, verses 26 and 27.